Hello everyone, I'm going to uh, continue on uh, with a series I'm doing now on uh, the numbers of the of the Bible, and uh, now I'm on number six. I hope this is okay. I, I've got a fascination with numbers. They do have a relevance in the Bible, uh, they're especially in the book of Revelations, uh, when it mentions the different numbers, and uh, so I uh, I want to try to do, I just did five, so now is number six. In the Bible, the number six symbolizes man and human weakness. It's the, the evils of Satan and the manifestation of sin. Um, man was created on the sixth day. Men are appointed six days to labor and to rest on the seventh. A Hebrew slave was to serve six years and be released in the seventh year. Six years were appointed for the land to be sown and harvested. The number six is associated with Satan and his temptation of Jesus. And of course, we're familiar with the prophecy in the book of Revelations about the three six sixes and the number and the mark of the end time beast. Six, six, six. Uh, as such, it represents a very, hold on just a minute, let's see. Uh, it, it marks the very existence of, of that man can produce without God and under the constant influence of the chief adversary. 666, it, you know, he, he wrote it with wisdom, the book of Revelation, uh, and it's going to take that for us to understand it. Uh, the thing, the book of Revelations has got things that have happened, things that are happening, and things that's going to happen. So if I tell you that Set a certain things going to happen. It may have already happened. Uh, you have to be real careful to know. Um, so, you know, appearances of the number six, Jephthah in the east served six years as the judge of Israel. The Bible makes reference to six earthquakes. Exodus 19, 18, 1 Kings 19, 11, Amos 1, 1, Matthew 27, 54, and 28, 2, and Acts 16, 26. You know, they accused Jesus six times of being demon-possessed. Mark, Luke, Mark 3.22, Luke 7.20, um, excuse me, Mark 3.22, John 7.20, John 8.48, John 8.52, John 10.20, and Luke 11.15. And the number six, not only is it represented with a lot of evil, but it's related to sorcery. In the New Testament, there are six references to people who practice sorcery, which is defined as divination by the assistance of evil spirits. In the end time, there are going to be false prophets and false Christs, which will produce great signs and wonders, sorcery for the express purpose of deception. Matthew 24, 24. And Paul ran into that uh, in his travels. In his ministry, uh, his first missionary journey took him to the Isle of Island of Cyprus, Acts thirteen four through fifty two, and fourteen one through twenty five. He meets with the island's governor, which is accompanied by E L Y M A S L M S also known as Bar-Jesus, a man who was a false prophet and sorcerer. 
In Samaria, a man named Simon the sorcerer observes Philip preaching the gospel and performing a number of miracles. He acts like he's repented. He pretends. He gets baptized and follows Peter, Philip and follows Philip to see him perform signs and wonders. Simon sees. When Peter and John come to the city that when they lay hands on people, they receive God's Holy Ghost. Simon soon approaches the apostles and tries to buy the ability to give the Holy Ghost so that he can further promote his deceptions. That's in Acts 8. While visiting Philippi during his second missionary journey, the apostle Paul runs into a slave woman possessed with a, a spirit of divination. Acts 16, 16. Her masters use her soothsaying skills to make money. And the best I remember about that story, they didn't want to give that up. Traveling Jewish exorcists using various charms, incantations, and so on, pretend to heal people and cast out demon, demons. The seven sons of a Jewish chief priest named S-C-E-V-A, Siva, try but failed miserably at casting out demons. The, the Word of God records that Christ was asked six times, most of the time by those who were self-righteous, to produce a sign to prove who he was and the claims he made. The Pharisees, the Pharisees, demand a sign after they accuse Christ of casting out demons by the power of Satan. And Jesus' response was that the only sign that would be given is that of Jonah the prophet. The Pharisees and Sadducees tried to tempt Jesus by asking for a sign in Matthew 16, 1. The twelve disciples on the Mount of Olives asked Christ what would be the sign of his second coming at the end of the world. Number four, some people who saw him cast a demon out of a person ask him for a sign from heaven, Luke eleven sixteen. After cleansing Jerusalem's temple at the start of his ministry, some Jews who saw what Jesus did demand a sign in John two eighteen. People who Christ miraculously fed ask him for a sign so they may believe in him. Isn't that something? He fed 5,000 men, not counting women and children. They left with a piece of fish and a piece of bread in their stomach. And uh, yet they thought more of, of the men fed than that he had more miracles. It's like, I, I don't know what made me think of this, but it's like I was talking about when I went and seen Brother Lige, uh, I wasn't just trying to memorize his answers. I was trying to see how he'd come up with that. You know, they say if you feed a man a fish, you feed him for a day. But if you teach a man to fish, you feed him for life. I was trying to learn how to fish for myself. Towards the end of his life, many people, primarily Jewish religious leaders, had come to believe Jesus was guilty of some kind of crime or, or, or bad sin. Six people, however, are recorded as stating that he was innocent of all the charges leveled against him. Those who found Jesus innocent were Roman, uh, the Pontius Pilate, Herod, and Judas. They all claimed that he was innocent. Pontius Pilate's wife, one of the thieves on the cross near Christ, and a Roman centurion, centurion who was on the crucifixion, all declared his innocence. You know, and over in Proverbs, the sixth chapter, it talks about these six things that the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination to him. So six has a significant, all, all the numbers have a significance in the Bible, some more than others. And maybe that's a lesser, minor thing to you, but uh, it's something that's 
food for thought. Uh, I, you probably never had anybody try to bring it to you much before, so I thought I would. Thought I would just uh, introduce you, expose you to it, and then let you decide if you want to uh, know anything more about it. I'm, I'm sure I'm welcome in comments, suggestions, or whatever. I've been given my phone number, 256-508-4410, and I might not get back to you right away, but I'll try to get to you, back to you as soon as I can. So, uh, and if you call me, please leave a message. I guess you notice I'm sitting down. <laughs> I've been standing for a long time on these videos, but I decided to sit. Uh, you know, I've, I've been standing holding the Bible, and it gets heavy. So I just wanted to sit for a while. If you want me to start back standing again, just let me know. May God bless you. I sure do care about you. And until next time, may the Lord bless you.